The following is a presentation of TFNN. Good morning. Markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets in negative territory just off the lows. You get the S&Ps negative by 12 points right now. That's about a third of a percent in the red, trading at 39.28. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by 48 points. That's about four tenths percent in the red. You're trading 11,722. We were higher overnight. We started trading lower about three in the morning Eastern time. We're about 150 points in the NASDAQ. NASDAQ 100 below where we were trading at at that time. You back it up on the S&P, you were pushing a price level of 39.68. So you're talking about 40 points in the red from where we escalated to overnight. We were up there again at about 3 a.m. Eastern time. Dow negative by 99 points right now. Call it 131,778. We were above 32,000 for most of the overnight session until that same time frame, about 3 a.m. when markets started turning south. Russell negative by four, 1760. You got Bitcoin back under 30,000, 29,550. Get the price accrued up a dollar at 110.87. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstack coming up at 40 past the hour. We talk to him every Wednesday, folks, from forex-trading-unlock.com. We always talk some forex. We usually get some crude as well. Crude holding up relatively well at 110 and change this morning. You got gold negative this morning, down $17 at 1848. And we jumped to notes and bonds. You got a little bit of higher price and lower yield. We're talking about a yield right now, 2.73%. Talk about a reversal, right? You put this thing on a daily. There's your 10 year. Uh, I'm going to back it up, get the full pull down that we had in terms of where we were 135 and change last August. I think we had the 10 year around 1.1, 1.2%. Maybe if somebody knows, what was the 10 year yield sitting at when we started this move to lower prices? Uh, so basically, the beginning of August, I think we we're just above 1%, somewhere around there. Uh, you were in quite a downtrend channel. Markets really escalating to the downside in the beginning of March. That's when yields got out of control. And I had mentioned, I mean, maybe this is just getting back within that channel line, right? You extend that line to the right as well. You're talking about maybe you can push up to a to a upper boundary line of 124.21. Uh, we will see. That'll be quite a rise. We're already three and a half full points off of where we were on May 9th, a couple weeks ago. Yields, 2.73%. Back to a short-term time frame. You jump over to the volatility index this morning, back above 30. Excuse me. You have the VIX trading at 30.06. All right. Jumping around to what we have going on in the market. We'll kick it off with. Futures slip before Fed minutes. So Fed minutes, 2 p.m. Eastern time today. You have yields falling as investors evaluate the Fed hike bets. Where are we going forward, man? It's going to be an interesting one. We'll see what the Fed had to say on their minutes. The last time we got the minutes, we got some serious action um, in the market. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks coming up in a few minutes after the first break. Uh, but nonetheless, you have the Treasury yield falling while the dollar rebounded from a two-day drop and the euro sliding as comments from the ECB officials indicated policy normalization will be gradual. Gradual. The ECB is in the midst of a debate of how aggressive it should be to uh, should act to rein in inflation. Nowhere near as aggressive as the U.S. is going to be um, that causing a little bit of craziness in terms of the dollar strength recently, putting a hurt on gold, right, putting a hurt on many things, causing our yields to rise dramatically. Um, lots of influences going on in this market. Economic data this morning. We got durable goods orders rising on steady business equipment demand. So bookings for long lasting goods. This number was out at 830, 40 minutes ago. Increased 0.4% in April. Core capital goods orders and shipments continue to advance. Uh, so the headline number. 0.4% in April after a downwardly revised 0.6% advance a month earlier. The value of cores, core capital goods, and that's investment in equipment that excludes aircraft and military hardware climbed 0.3% after a 1.1% gain a month earlier. The median estimates, the market was looking for a 
0.6% increase in orders and 0.5% on the core number, so a slight miss. Uh, the figures suggest companies are adhering to capital expenditure plans as they seek to enhance productivity to ease the burden of high inflation, but it was a slight miss in terms of what they were looking for. Uh, core capital goods shipments, a figure that is used to help calculate equipment investment in the government's gross domestic product report, increased 0.8% pointing to a solid start to the second quarter. Uh, we also have factory surveys. Yeah, that's a slowdown on the horizon. So Philadelphia's index of capital expenditures six months from now dropped in May to a six-year low, while a similar gauge for New York Fed was the weakest since August. Bookings for commercial aircraft rose 4.3% after falling the prior month. Let's jump over to Boeing, because Boeing's been quite a problem child recently. BA is their symbol. Down to 117 last Friday. You put this thing on a daily, man, right? You were in a downtrend channel that I was watching for a while. This thing just breaks out of it. Remarkable that you're talking about being down basically at the COVID lows when travel ceased to exist. You make it down to a low of 113 in May of the year of 2020. $89 was the exact COVID low. And I'm not sure where you go here yet, folks. Um because it has not found a bid just yet, and you're going to open down another 50 cents to a dollar on Boeing shares this morning. All right, we jump over to Dick's Sporting Goods. Out with their numbers, uh, a little bit of a miss this morning. Shares sink after retailer cuts outlook for the year, joining the broader retail trend. Tough, tough period for retail. So they now expect to earn between 915 and 1170 a share. The previous range was 1170 to 1310. Analysts were looking for 1256. It's not going to be 1256 if the range is 915 to 1170. Uh, forecasting same store sales growth to be down 8% to down 2% versus a previous expectation of 4% to flat. Analysts were calling for a year over year decline of 2.5%. So it's going to be down at least 2%, maybe down 8%. The market was looking for 2%. Earnings for the current quarter, they report 285 versus 248. Revenue, they beat as well, but it's not what have you done for me in the past. It's what are you going to do for me in the future? And there is the pullback of them recently. Now, they've already paid quite a dear price in terms of retail, right? You back things up to just where it was this month. May 2nd, I got a 102 price tag on Dick's. Amazing, man, what's happened to retail in the month of May. Nothing is safe in this market, folks. Uh, make sure you're diversified because nothing is safe right now in this market. From 100, you're going to open at $62. That's down from 147. You see the 618 on this chart of the entire acceleration from 13 bucks up to 147. Now you could say that that turned 13 dollars. You don't hear me. No, I think we're fine. Um, maybe you can check it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dick's down to 62 bucks. And you're basically right back to this consolidation in Dix towards the later part of 2020. Now, Dix had a move of about $10 priced in for their earnings, and that's about the move you're going to get this morning. You're trading at $62. bucks. you are getting a $9 move to the downside. You check out the 15-minute. We were as low as $57 on the news initially at 730 in the morning. We're opening at $62. Uh, well, we're at least at 62 right now. We'll see where we open in about 15 minutes from right now. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&P's negative by 15 points right now. We're going to be coming back with our man, Kevin Hanks. We'll be talking a little bit of earnings. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit of Fed minutes. We'll be right back, folks. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P negative by 15 points right now. You're looking at the NASDAQ 100 negative by 57. Dow off 133. We got the VIX sitting right at about 30. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV. Fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Your host, Kevin Hicks. Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, they walk you through the day's market action. They set up hypothetical trades, folks. Every trade they set up, you're talking about defined risk. Kevin Hicks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, the, you know, uh, we've had kind of a, it doesn't feel like it, but in terms of economic data, we've had kind of a quiet start to the week. Well, that picks up pace today. We just got a durable goods number. We got some mortgage applications this morning. And today at 2 o'clock Eastern, we'll get the Fed minutes. I, you know, it's funny, Tommy. I don't, I personally don't think that the release of the Fed minutes from two weeks ago should move the market, but it always does. Without <laughs> fail, the market moves when we get the granular look at what happened at the Fed meeting. So uh, Fed minutes come out today, and then we'll get a second look at GDP tomorrow, and then we'll get personal income and outlays on Friday. Uh, so there's a lot going on today, and today we'll have NVIDIA with, uh, with earnings out here for the belt, so still some good high-profile earnings this week, but I think the rest of this week, Tommy, what will keep people glued to their computers through the end of the day Friday is that uh, inflation data on Friday. Yeah, I can't. I was trying to look up the day, Kevin, because I remember chatting with you about the, the last month. The last time that we got Fed minutes was it early April, maybe, from the March meeting. Um, whatever it was, it seemed like we got some fireworks, man. Either way, we were chatting about it in the morning. My, my memory, uh, it's just in my own head. I said, man, um, recently the market has reacted sometimes. So 2 o'clock, we get those Fed minutes. Uh, we have some Dick Sporting Good. Numbers out this morning, Kevin, some tough numbers continuing on retail. Pretty remarkable when you look at some of these stocks. Dix had already traded so much lower with the retail, man. They were sitting at 110 bucks basically just over a month ago, let alone they were sitting at $102 on May 4th, and you're going to open at 63 bucks. What's your take on the overall retail sector, man? Is there going to be a max pain situation here? Pretty remarkable. Strong companies like Dix, they're not going anywhere, man. They're going to be around, and you shave 30 40% off the price of that equity in a matter of a few weeks. 
yeah, retail is just going through a horrible, uh, you know, segment of their of the economy right now. They're 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 trying to manage their inventories. They're trying to get those right. You know, it's interesting that Dix is down and and J W Nordstrom is well, it was up. It was up ten percent. Now it's up Oof, maybe, yeah. maybe a little over one one two quick. percent. But that's because the overall market. But uh, you know, re- retail the the all these stocks. Some of them did better during the pandemic. Some did worse, and they're all trying to figure out what their futures are. You're right, Dix isn't going anywhere. It's the largest sporting goods retailer in the country, but they've got to figure out their their, their data. And a big part of our conversation with them yesterday was Nike. Right, Nike is moving more and more product to online and e-commerce. So yeah. that affects places like Dick's Sporting Goods, and they're working on trying to get inventories right. They had fairly good numbers, but they guided poorly. They, they guided yeah. poorly for the second half of the year, as everyone, Tommy, is using a cautious tone for the second half of the year. So, um, yeah, there, there, there's more pain uh, coming in some of these names. We'll get Dollar Tree today that, that, that we'll cover. That's another discount retailer. So, uh, yeah. Retail is always a volatile trade, Tommy, and it continues to be so. The inventories, you make a great point, man. Some of the inventory levels, I think Target had like 43% inventory, um, but huge numbers for for a lot of these retailers. Walmart as well. Do you see, Kevin, because I've been chatting about even with my friends saying, you know, we're we're all aware of the inflation factor going on. Um, Are these inventory numbers, are they going to be discounting some of these large inventory levels that they have, would that be like one of the factors that might contribute to inflation coming down? Because it makes, you know, if if, if all these stores have so much merchandise, let's say my fiance, I say, you know, there's going to be some sales coming to Target, man, because they got so much inventory, they got to get rid of it. Is, is that something you're looking for? Because I'm chatting even with my friends because these inventory levels, it seems like they'd have to be discounting them at some degree. And maybe that's one variable coming into the pricing of everything going on. Well, let's just focus on Target. Because their conference call after their earnings talked about they have a big inventory in discretionary purchases that isn't moving. And people are moving to more essential purchases as the economy starts to slow. So that inventory of patio furniture, things like that, discretionary purchases, will probably have to be discounted and come down. And that was part of the outsized weakness in Target was they're getting their inventory wrong. When people yeah. are, are starting to move towards essentials, they had a bunch of inventory in discretionary stock uh, or inventory. So, yeah, it's it's kind of a swing and a miss in terms of targeting. You've got to get that inventory discounted and out the door and get the new inventory in. So, yeah, there, there, there's probably – you'll probably get an indication of who got the inventory issue wrong by what they're discounting, Tommy. There might be some deals out there, folks. Even, you know, I was starting to do in my head, Kevin, right, saying I, I, I'm in the market potentially to get a bigger vehicle. We got plenty of kids in the house. They probably need a big SUV. And maybe you'll see some some decreasing prices of just large SUVs because, man, these gas prices, there's probably a lot of families, rightfully so, that were not thinking that when they were buying a big SUV, the gas was going to be pushing five bucks a barrel anytime soon when it wasn't even close to it a year ago. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how some of our personal preferences, personal buying behaviors, because I imagine, man, that people just aren't going to be willing. I mean, we are a nation of SUVs right now, man. And at five bucks uh, a gallon, I imagine there might be some deals there as well. Well, we go forward. You mentioned one of the stocks that's coming up with earnings, Kevin. What are you guys talking about at 12 o'clock today? Yeah, we'll talk about Dollar Tree and their earnings coming up after the bell. We'll look at NVIDIA. Uh, with like folio and their earnings come after the bell. And then we'll look at Splunk uh, in, in our third segment. So three good names today uh, focusing on earnings. We'll look at all the economic data. We'll look at the overall market. Futures are off their lows. So there's a bit of a firming going on here. None of the economic data was catastrophic. So we'll see how this day plays out, Tommy. 
Yeah, and pretty. I was just pulling up uh, Dollar Tree, even Dollar General. I took a look at as well, real quick. Nvidia, all of them, about a ten percent move, maybe a little bit more, priced into their numbers. Huge moves right now. Um, which, as option traders, you got to love, folks. You got premium. You can do it both ways. Whether you're buying the premium, you're selling the premium. Uh, it's pretty cool as we come into, and we got a VIX, Kevin, sitting at about thirty. Well, we're coming into the long weekend, man. We got three days left. Uh, we look forward to the show at 12 o'clock today, Kevin, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll be watching at noon, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, Kevin. Take care. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in 12 noon Eastern time every trading day. Kevin Hanks, Tom White, they walk you through the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trades. I got NVIDIA up here on the Thinkorswim platform. You have a market maker move expected of 1552. Now, this is as of the close of yesterday. NVIDIA 161. You talk about a pullback, man, from 346 to 161. You have a $16 move priced in to their earnings tonight and you're talking about folks in august of 2020 nvidia trading at 147 you get a move down within the expected move and you're back almost two years in nvidia after being at 346 we'll see we'll jump over to the analyze tab we get their numbers after the bell tonight stay tuned folks we'll be back for the open If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now. Jumping back to the S&P, you're negative by 12 points right now. On a 15-minute basis, you were as high, as I mentioned at the start of the show, almost pushing 39.70. You're trading 39.26 right now, negative by 15 points. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're trading. Amazon, negative by about a tenth of a percent. Microsoft shares down three quarters percent to kick off the trading day. Apple, down a full percent. 
Now we got some big pullbacks right now. If you have Apple down a percent, you got Microsoft down three quarters percent. You have Google down 1.1 percent, and somehow the Nasdaq 100 is only down 50 points. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla's flat. Talk about a pullback, man. It's just not stopping on Tesla. Down to 617 overnight. You're back to 627 right now, basically where you were as of the close of yesterday. We jump around to Dix. Down 9.5% on their week forecast going forward for Dix Sporting Goods. Uh, and as Kevin mentioned, we get the dollar stores coming up. Dollar Tree. Now, you talk about some pullbacks, folks. Look at the way that these equities got hit already. And that's the thing that's kind of crazy about Dix. They've already, to put things back on Dix, right? Let's go back uh, 20 days. You have some serious gaps. That's a one-way trip from 103 to $70. And meanwhile, they come out with the earnings that a lot of people already knew were going to be pretty rough, and you're still down 10% on that equity. Uh, Dollar Tree, there's your drop-off for them from 156 That was last Wednesday down to 129 and that's where we're opening today. When we jump over to the Analyze tab, they have their numbers tomorrow, Dollar Tree, $16 move for a $13 stock, so that's some serious volatility. And Dollar General, you're talking about a $17 move for $195 stock, you take a look at their chart, pretty similar action. As we were just trading at 250, we're trading at 195. Uh, Kevin mentioned NVIDIA they'll be talking about. NVIDIA, we pulled up the longer term time frame. They're talking about a $16 move, their numbers after the bell tonight, more than a 10% move priced in to the options on that equity. And let's jump around to what else we have going on. Mortgage demand. Kevin referenced it as we talked to him at the top of the hour. Mortgage demand slides even further as interest rates pull back slightly. Applications to refinance a home loan drop 2% for the week, 75% lower than the same time a year earlier. Applications for a mortgage to purchase a home were flat week to week and down 16% from a year earlier. Uh, the average contract interest rate for a 30-year fixed mortgage with a confirming loan balance of 647000 bucks or less, 5.46% down from 5.49. So when somebody asks you what a 30-year is going for, folks, it's going for 5.5%. All right. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out is, you know, I was chatting with friends who are not in the financial business, but they're always in the business of whether it's investments, home investments, et cetera. Um, and the consensus seems to be that if you're a homeowner, you're probably okay. Rents are so high. Uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to sell your home right now for a 3.5% loan and go rent somewhere? Are you going to sell it and go buy somewhere else where the, the loan is going to be 5.5% now? Why would you do that, right? But if you are an investor, man, and you got a plethora of properties, I would be very wary of how this is going to hit that market. And yeah, it's going to be a tough one, man. What about refinances as well, right? Who's going to be refinancing their home for any time soon? Um, yeah. And what was it? What's this? Is it Rocket, right? What is? No. What's the Rocket Mortgage? Rocket, Rocket Companies? Yeah, RKT. Is that Rocket Mortgage? Is that? I think it is. Yeah, if this doesn't tell you everything, man. When they went public, I think this is. It's, yeah, Rocket. Yeah, when they went public, right? Dan Snyder, what's he? He's, he's, he's got, what does he own? He owns one of those teams out there. Um, no, Dan Snyder's Washington. Who owns, who owns uh, excuse me, who owns, who owns Quicken? Um, either way, when they went public, I said, why are you going public, man? You're going public at peak of the market, right? There's no reason to go public and sell shares of your company if you have future growth coming down the line. Well, I forget what they went public at, but this thing chopped around between 15, as high as 30. You make it to 40 last year when things were rocking out of control, and it's been a one-way ship to $8. And I would be careful because going forward... Um, I'm not sure how the refinance market plays out when you have people locked into mortgages. Um, yeah, thanks, Dad. So is that, yeah, so they go in August of 2020 uh, at $18. Yeah, it's a rocket trajectory right into the ground, man. Because it's gonna take a lot for people to ever need to refinance. Now, yes, people buying right now, right? Anybody buying homes at this level, they're gonna be the ones refinancing. But the only people refinancing are gonna be anybody buying a home 2022 forward. 
for a very considerable period of time, which if you think about how long the refinance acceleration has gone forward as rates went from double digits when I was born to zero percent basically recently, uh, there's no reason for anybody to refinance anytime soon unless you're one of the people that are buying a mortgage now as rates have risen. And yeah, this one, you know, pay attention when somebody goes public, folks, and they don't need to. They had no reason to go public. All right. None whatsoever. And they go public when business was booming. And the only reason you do that is because you think that maybe you're at peak levels. And look at that chart. Uh, S&P charging back. We're in positive territory, man. Look at that pop to 39.46. The Nasdaq pops as well. Let's see how those FANG stocks are trading. Apple still negative by. Oh, no. Yeah. Apple. Look at that pop, man. You talk about moves. Apple just popped basically $2 from where it was pre-market, which is adding about $32 billion in market cap, just like that, as markets turn green. Let's see how Dix is trading on theirs. I mean, they've clawed back almost $10 of where they were initially to 57 bucks. We jump around to some of the other retail stocks. You got Walmart down half a percent right now. Target positive by about three tenths. You jump over to Amazon, man. Talk about some pullbacks. Amazon up 1% right now. Let's see how the stocks are coming out in the next couple of days. NVIDIA catches a bop by about $5. You're trading a 165. Let's see the dollar stores. Basically hanging tough, waiting for their earnings right now. Flat for Dollar Tree and Dollar General. All right, let's see what else we got going on for stocks making moves. And what do we got pulled up? Uh, oh, you know what I want to talk about is crypto. Uh, so be very careful here, folks. Anderson Horowitz, right? They are well into crypto, man. I think they're a big player in the in the board ape universe of, of everything going on. Um, they're starting a new fund, a four four point five billion dollar fund for backing crypto and blockchain companies. Okay, so yes, that's going to be crypto, but don't take that as meaning that they're just starting a fund to go buy Bitcoin. Okay, because there is a lot more money to be made in the business that they are running. And I understand it by like the faintest of notions, but all I understand is they're basically printing currency, giving themselves a bunch of it, and then selling it off to everybody else. You know, that Board Ape Yacht Club, man, and they're, start, they're selling virtual land, and they're selling virtual land in ape coins. They create the ape coin. They give themselves billions of the ape coins. Um, it's probably a very, very brilliant business idea right now, but don't take that to mean that Bitcoin is going to be a huge buy at 30000 because they can make money in that field by doing different things as opposed to just loading up in Bitcoin. Um, being able to print their own cryptocurrency and building an F NFT world is a lot easier better way to make money in the crypto sector. And I have no idea how to do it, which is why I'm not doing it, man. But the, the brilliant men and women that do, quite a time to be alive, folks, when you can literally just create your own currency, print it off, give yourself billions of it, sell virtual land that has to be paid for in that cryptocurrency, lock up those purchases for a year so they can't sell it. Um, the list goes on and on. Yeah, be very, very wary. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk a little bit about Luna and stay away from Tether, folks, if you are in Tether. you got some risks. We'll be talking to Teddy Kegstat. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P positive by five points right now. You're trading at 39.46. We accelerate on the open and jumping over to that crude market. We got the price of crude right now. Let me pull it up. CL, 110.56. We were just above 111. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy, folks, every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Put it on your calendar, 9.40 a.m. Eastern time every Wednesday. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So we got uh, volatility in these markets, to say the least, Teddy. Um, quite a week for retail, but jumping around to Forex, we have a little bit of uh, a reversal maybe in the dollar. We have yields back to 2.73% this morning. What do you think about this market? Uh, well, right now, I think we have a nice little corrective rally going against the dollar. Um, I think it's possible it could edge a little higher. And one of the main reasons is the Treasury bond market. Uh, we know that right now uh, the 10 year and the 30 year have been trending higher for the past week and a half. Uh, interestingly enough, the 30 year bond had a reverse head and shoulders that it broke out of last week. And over the past couple sessions, it's been trying to edge, you know, push resistance a little bit. So, I mean, right now, if that head and shoulders pattern is really true, we could still see a little bit more upside potential in interest rate or uh, interest rate pricing meaning a little pressure on the dollar also and that with that variable you know but i would be, i think that the markets are getting kind of skittish because when you really see how much the dollar has corrected when it has over the past like few months it hasn't corrected very much so i think sure. we're kind of at that little friction point right now yeah when i just take a look at it on a six month basis i mean quite a little pullback what do we have almost up to 105 right in early mm -hmm. may and we're sitting at 102.27. That's the DXY, the Bloomberg dollar index. Mm -hmm. um, but that's coming, as you say, from a price point of 96 in, in, in almost March. Um, yeah, not really a pullback. We were, you know, I love Fibonacci levels. And I don't even have to put a, a Fibonacci level on that. We're nowhere near even to the 382 in terms of a right. real pullback uh, of still a bullish run. Um, mm -hmm. Breaking down the individual pairings. Where, where can we start off? What, what are you looking at this week for the individual pairings? Okay, well, interestingly enough, you know, the yen that I've been a bull of uh, for a very long has had a pretty nice correction over the past, like, especially week or so. Um, I would be careful at these levels being a seller. I'm not saying that we haven't seen the low yet, but we are kind of bottoming in there, especially with oil poised to break out to the upside, you know. So you got to realize that 
the, the second the bonds turn and the 10 year turn, even on a daily basis, you see this knee jerk reaction in the US dollar yen trade. So I think that as the, the interest rate trade starts to give a little re- relief, meaning the rates are going short term lower in the market rate and higher in pricing, I think as that starts to nudge up against resistance and pull back, you're going to see a big snap back in the US dollar yen as well. You know, so okay. I, I really, I really do believe that if oil does start to break out to the upside, we're in front of a holiday weekend you know there's a lot of reasons to be more bullish oil than not yeah and if we if we can break out if i mean right now we're wedging if we challenge that 116 level and hit it get above 116 well i can't see how the u.s dollar yen wouldn't explode to the upside you know so and the euro u.s dollar trade i would use cautious at caution at these levels because we already hit our short-term daily target we had a buy signal about a week and a half ago um but we had a weekly buy nice. signal that was finished yesterday or not yesterday, okay. last week. Um, and if that level runs out of gas, you know, that's why I was mentioning the head and shoulders in the uh, interest rate um, envir- uh, market because these coincide with each other right now. So you have the rate yeah. pressure going down, meaning up in price, and the dollar pulling back. But it's very, very sensitive, you know, and we have a lot of inflation numbers that, hey, you know, we were talking about this months ago about how the lag is there. And now people are accepting the fact that, well, we're going to be talking about inflation six months from now still, you know, yeah. and, and I even heard you earlier about people's choices, you know, like at Target, yeah, maybe you can get a, a good deal on a patio set right now, but people aren't going to be buying patio sets right now when they're spending $6 a gallon. It's a tough diesel. choice. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. Hey, we got a caller, Teddy. All right. Let's jump okay. to a caller if you don't mind. We got Jeff from Philly and he wants to talk a little New Zealand dollar. Jeff, good morning, man. Thanks for calling in. Hi, good morning, Tommy. Thanks for taking my call. And uh, Teddy, thanks for uh, t- taking my call. Um, so this is a little bit uh, of an obscure question, but um, I've been trading um, Econ News and FX for uh, about the last four years. And I saw something last night that I've never seen before. There, there were two very strange uh, price actions. And I, I wanted to ask you if you, had, if you heard anything or you know, just had any comments on this. So what I saw was... Um, there was a uh, rate decision coming out in New Zealand at uh, 10 o'clock uh, Eastern time, PM. And um, three minutes before the news came out, uh, price started dropping. The, the New Zealand against the U.S. dollar uh, started dropping. Now, I, I've seen you know, sometimes news releases come out a little bit early, maybe 10 seconds, 30 seconds at most, something like that. But this was three minutes early. I saw the price started dropping. and But then, uh, exactly at uh, 10 o'clock, when the news release came out, it shot up like crazy. It was a, a huge uh, move, and uh, actually I made a lot of money. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it shot up in the opposite direction. And the weird thing about that, I mean, in addition to the, the early price drop for no apparent reason, is that the forecast for that rate decision was uh, 2% and the actual was 2% and 2.00%. I mean, precisely the same. So when I see big price moves like this, it's in response to some kind of a surprise. But, this, I mean, it's going to be less of a surprise. <laughs> it exactly matched the forecast. So to get this huge move, you know, without a surprise, and to get the price dropped in the opposite direction a little bit before the well, a few minutes before the news, uh, those are two very you know strange uh, things. Um, well, it is and it isn't. Uh, you got to remember when you're trading a news event, that's very typical, you know. So, I mean, especially in today's algo world. So, I would assume that probably right before that number, you have a lot of liquidation where a lot of um, algos will actually shut off because they don't want to trade the number because of the, you know, the, the noise that happens during those moments. You know, I mean, like you said, everything came out as expected, you know. So, now I think one of the biggest questions you have to ask is besides the knee jerk reaction on just the, the volatility of the number going out is what are the expectations you know are they going to continue to follow suit you know so and i think that you know that there is an interest rate war going on now with all the central banks it's a matter of who's going to catch up to who first you know except for like japan where they're they're not doing anything when they said they would you know so i think that that's where you're getting these little reactions right now, but you get the expectations no matter what for New Zealand are not that good, you know? So where this raising the interest rate, would you would think it would help support their currency more? I mean, right now, New Zealand dollar is in an upside correction. 
I view it as a correction, especially because their lockdown measures are very severe and still coming back again. You know, so there's a lot of reasons why their economic numbers are going to be very poor moving forward over the next six months. So that's going to weigh on their currency. So and we know that they just pop their rate. Well, we're going to pop our rate again in the next few weeks, no matter what, at least and more more likely over the next few months, we're going to pop our rate more than theirs. So I think that that's why you're seeing this kind of a reaction that you're looking at that happened. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for your insights. I appreciate you taking the time. Jeff, mm-hmm. that was a great question, man. Thanks so much for calling in. All right, thanks. Take care. Teddy, I appreciate the update as always, man. Have a great holiday weekend, and we look forward to chatting you next Wednesday. We'll see where Crude is following Memorial Day, man. Higher. <laughs> Not surprising, man. Thanks so much, Take Teddy. I appreciate it as holiday. always. Okay, you too, man. We'll talk to you next week. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Opening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by four right now. The NASDAQ 100 positive by 17. The Dow positive by 35. And uh, so sad what went on in Texas yesterday. Just got to say a couple words because, man, I was crying last night just watching Biden talk about it, talking about those parents, those families laying down, wondering if they're ever going to sleep again, man. Um, the sadness is just devastating, folks. And, you know, of course, I'm praying for those families, but hopefully we can do something. I don't know what it is. It's so political. I get it. But you got to ask yourself, what are we doing? And we're doing nothing right now. We got to do something. 
Okay, we're doing nothing right now. And the normal discourse goes, let's put guards in schools. All right. I have a five year old in the house. He goes to a school. There's a guard there. I like there's a guard there. Okay, that's not going to solve the problem. Yesterday, you had an 18 year old showing up with an assault rifle with body armor, shooting the guards on his way into killing kids in the school. That's not going to solve it, folks. So what are we doing? Okay, for the greatest country in the world, what are we doing? Ask yourself, what are we doing? What are we doing to create difference? Okay, I don't know what the solution is, but we often forget, folks. I was born in 1980. Okay, Uh, when I went to high school, when I went to college, there was a federal assault weapons ban from 1994 to 2004. It expired. Okay, I'm not saying that solves everything. I'm not saying that that would even fly with this court right now, but at least. Our country was trying to do something when I was in high school, and we didn't even have the same problem. They were trying to do something. What are we doing? What are we doing right now? All right, ask yourself, what are we doing to make sure it doesn't happen again? Okay, you had Dick's Sporting Goods come out after the Parkland shooting in 2018, and they weren't going to sell guns anymore to kids 18. They were going to have only gun sales to people who are 21. I believe they weren't going to sell assault rifles either. Okay, that's a company that's trying to do something. Okay, what are we doing? Guards in schools aren't going to solve the problem when you have kids showing up who are 18 with assault rifles, with body armor, mowing guards down on their way into the school. So what are we doing? What are we doing, folks? We got to do something. I got a one year old. I got a five year old and I got a 15 year old in the house. Okay, and it's too real. It's too sad. And those poor families, man, I have them in my heart. Keep them in your hearts. Um, All those kids, man, so sad. So got to do something, folks. Okay, we've got to come together and do something. What are we doing? Stay tuned, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. S&P's Positive by 5. we got our 